My name is Linksa Chesnakis, teach 12th grade humanities, and today we'll be doing the question formulation technique. I think of the QFT as a thinking strategy. And what students are going to be doing is preparing for a Socratic seminar tomorrow where they're going to be discussing questions that they created today. And I'm not going to be doing any of the generating questions, that all that work is on them. And they're also going to be using those questions to help them break down the writing process when they get to their final assessment for the book that we're about to finish reading, which is called The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz. So let's get right into it. Group one and two, this is your cue focus. Junior thinks that Trujillo treated the Dominican Republic like it was his plantation and he was the master. This may look familiar to you from the book. Group three and four, this is your cue focus. Fate controls lives. We just have to accept that. All right, ready, set, go. Five minutes. Who was Trujillo? Remember to write down questions exactly as stated. Yo, where's T from? His name is T now. Where's T from? T. Where's T from? Of course, Dia. Um, what's the name? Who controls fate? Yeah, that's what I said. Who controls fate? I think he exaggerated how, like, how the video was. You can't discuss it. Oh. How did he become so powerful? It's okay. So does he have any kids? Or relatives. Oh, what re what relation what relation had um, Junior with Trujillo? Another minute. Keep going. Oh, that, that, that is a good question. Yeah, yeah thank you. Every group, try to get a couple more questions out. What are open-ended questions? <laughs> open-ended questions. Open-ended questions require an explanation. It cannot be answered with yes or no, but thank with you. one word. Thank you. Okay, so go to it. You have a minute to classify your questions, okay? And if you're not sure, ask your partners. If you're not sure, ask your group members. What controls faith? Is that a quote? Closed-ended or open-ended? Because you can't answer it. You can't answer it, but it's an open-ended question because you can't really answer it with a yes or no answer. Close is yes or no, right? Yeah. Open is like, that's, you can that's answer it one word. Does faith exist? So close. That's close. Yeah. Have, how does this shape? Instead of putting how, just put does this shape. So that's a yes or no. Because this is open ended. Um, wait, I don't know. I thought that sounds. What are some good things, some advantages of a closed ended question? Meaning one that can only be answered with a word or yes or no. Yeah, Evan? Straight to the point. You have your answer like that. How about the disadvantages, some not so good things about closed ended questions, meaning words that, I mean, questions that have one word answers or yes or no, some disadvantages. Kenny? You don't give enough details. Yeah. You don't give enough detail? It's not really saying anything. It's not really saying anything? You just have a bunch of follow up questions. If you follow one question mm -hmm. that just sets you up to answer all of those questions, then that'd be better. Mm -hmm. yeah, you get all the information you So what you're going to do in the next two minutes, you're actually going to manipulate your questions now, okay? Choose one close-ended that you labeled with a C. Make it open by either adding or taking away a word. Then choose, choose an open-ended question, make it closed, close it off. You could take away, add a word, okay? So just choose one of each. So choose one close, make it open, choose one open, make it closed. Okay? So take three minutes to decide what your three most important are, deliberate, circle them, and then write down why you chose them. Okay? Yeah. And whatever, like the three best questions. I think we should choose the two that we switched in a different one. So does fake control lives? Yeah, does fake control lives? And why does fake control lives? And a different one. I like what are some examples. Yeah. Yeah, but, we need, that's, but without so we need to find out what we need to find out if fate exists to find out all the rest of these questions. Ooh. Oh, that's what. Yeah. Nah, but it, it, that is a part of the question. Does wait? Does fate control lives? And do you really think? And why does fate control lives? Does fate control lives? Why does fate control lives? And seek. 
determines lives, how do you determine fate? So we could do those things. Like, what is this? What's the historical significance behind that? These three are closed, mm -hmm. but it's good to have one open one just to know why this is important. So why is this why <laughs> this is so important <laughs> the way you treated Dominicans in the book. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said, the way it's you okay if there's some disagreement here. If you're like, ah, I really like this one, but you like that one, you can talk about why. All right? Because you're gonna want to write down on the back of your chart paper why you chose those three. And then you're gonna share that with the small group that had your same cue focus in a few minutes, okay? And the sharing out piece, well, I think there's two purposes to that. One is it gives other groups ideas. I think that, you know, it, it's, it continues that, that creative process and it makes them realize, wow, they all have something to contribute because no group asked the same question. And I also think it's a public recognition move on the teacher's part, my part, because it's like, look, you guys have just done this really hard work. You've just generated your own questions. And typically that's my role as a teacher. Because you need to know what to ask, when to ask, how you ask it, what kind of question you need to ask, like open or close. Pushback is sometimes because students aren't used to doing that thinking in other classes. And then they come here and you see the transformation. They take ownership of the questions that they created more than the ones that I created for them. The QFT is part of that transition process from being maybe disempowered to feeling like, wow, I can actually do this. I have the confidence to ask questions when I need to. And lastly, how does learning to ask your own questions make you feel? Like when you're doing the process of question asking, how are you feeling? Yeah. yeah. I feel more confident asking my questions. Sometimes, like when I ask my questions, I'm always like, "Oh wait, was that a smart question or that stupid question?" Mm -hmm. Doing this, like you actually think about your questions before you actually ask them. Mm -hmm. Well, learning how to ask your own questions, like, kind of teaches you like to think more. I feel like I can make right decisions. So I think make questions help you to make right decisions. Yeah. So that's how I. Feel. It challenges me. No question, no matter how small it is, whether it's a closed question or open question, it's really not a dumb question. Like That's really my main thing that I learned from it. I've learned the best thing you can really do is just keep on asking questions.